Hello, everyone. From this week on, we're moving to a new topic that is that is called the earn model. There's four types of earn models, uh, and we will introduce each of them later from this week and next week. Uh, so so this week we will first explore the first two types of the earn models. And uh, different from the previous topic, which is about uh, probability measures and like Laplace experiment and some many definitions and terms. So this week there will be more realistic problem. And it's all about the same topic, which is called earn model. So the four models are something with re replacement order matters, something without replacement order matters, something without replacement order irrelevant, and something with, that, uh, with replacement order irrelevant. So uh, th there's like a two-way table and each, uh, and each the x axis represent uh, with or without replacement, there are two choices. And for the y-axis, there's uh, order matters or irrelevant, also two choices. So two times two is four possible cases. Um, so the first model we'll talk about is, um, it's not any of them. It's it's the it's a definition of an earn model. So uh, so many Laplace experiments can be reduced to one of the four earn models. So that's like category category or classification process. So the first what's earn model? Earn model is a considered earn with n balls which are labeled like one to n. So what is earn first? Earn is like uh, if you are like uh, making lotteries before from a traditional way. There's like a very large box. And it contains many, uh, many small balls inside it. And you just uh, use your hand to pick one and get it out. And that's that process is called earn. So, uh, so imagine now there's a large box that have n balls inside, which are labeled one to n. So that's the case. And the n model is an experiment in which k times a ball is drawn from the random from the earn, and its number is noted. So um, because you are buying, uh, for example, you buy in this case you buy k. Uh, lotteries, so you have k chances to catch a ball out. But there's there can be different cases. You, you, you can you can pick a ball, and after and after you pull it out, you pull it back. And that is one possible case. Or you pull it out and you don't pull it back, and and directly draw another one from it. So that's the second that's the second uh, possible way. So that is called uh, return uh, with replacement or without replacement. So uh, and also, when you draw a like, for example, you draw a couple times the ball outside. Uh, like uh, uh, you draw one ball and put it here, and draw another one, put it here, and draw another one, play here. So imagine, for example, if the numbers here are listed like one, four, five, one, four, five. Uh, is that different from one, five, four? That's a question. Like that's like a list and a set problem. List can have an order. But in set doesn't have order. So if you consider one four five and one five four is the same case, that is called the order of the number uh, is irrelevant. But if you treat them as different, uh, the order matters. So that's the difference. And also notice that the possible outcome uh, uh, fancy W and the size of the symbol space omega associated with an earn model depend on how we draw the balls and know their numbers. So the number of outcomes for the four cases we discussed uh, just now is, is totally different if we have like, uh, if we have different ways to interpret that. So let's see, just as what I said, the R model is, is a, maybe they do not have a such large open. They always like have a very small opening, which you can only put your hands in. But here it has a very large and wide opening. So you can put, uh, you can get a ball out, uh, very easily. So that's the ideal case. And uh, uh, you just draw ball from it and notice a one, a two, a three to the AK because you have K chances to draw the ball out. So that's a, that's a very general way to draw the picture. Uh, that's, uh, it's very hard to describe it's any of the four cases above because uh, they don't say if A1, A2 are ordered or they, mm, the, this graph doesn't show if a1 is drawn and replaced? Maybe not. Maybe yes. So, so this is very hard to tell. It's just a it's just an imagery uh, image uh, representation. So first we'll see the most uh, the easiest model, and the first model is the sampling with replacement or the matters. So uh, if we draw k times from n with n balls, 
So first we must satisfy uh, the order matters. So the, and the order of the ball are noted, which means uh, you draw the first out and you take note. One is in the first place. So if you draw the second out, uh, second out is the number six and you note it, six is in the second place. So that is the order matters. And also the ball is put back to the urn because it's with replacement, with replacement. So pull one out, get it back. And second time you uh, draw six out, uh yeah this is uh this is um this is very similar to like uh draw one out and do not put it back and draw like you if we oh the second is six but it is slightly different so we'll see uh so so first we'll define in this case what's the outcomes what's the sample space and what's the like the size of the sample space so first the outcome and the fancy W, the outcome is uh, it's a tuple. It's a so what's the dimension of the tuple? It's k dimension because you have you draw k times. So each time you have an outcome. So the outcome is a k tuple, where a i in this case a one to a k is the number of the i draw. So that's the outcome is very easy to understand. You have a k balls here, and it's in the order. It's in an ordered matter one to k. Okay, so what's the sample space? Sample space, uh, uh, you can consider all the elements in the sample space as a as a K tuple. So the element here is a K tuple. All right. So how can we determine a K tuple? Um, uh, because you are sampled, because you are drawable out and put it back. So each time you have the probability is from any of the angles. Uh, so so the first time you draw the possibility comes from uh, for example there's five balls and you can be and it can be one two three or five and for example you draw a three out and because it's with replacement so you put it back so second time you see okay there's still five chance one two three or five and the second time you mm, like draw one out and put one back and the third time you see it's still one two three four five so so that's the so that's the how the process goes. So um, because each in each each uh in each i iteration in the k tuple, it can have n cases. So a one, uh, so anything like a i can be from the set one to n. So in another way, we say it's all possible k tuples with values in one to n. Yeah, that's not very hard to to think about, right? This is the simplest case. Uh, if you are like you are not able to understand you think it's very abstruse then you uh you set up a box and draw a ball and try sometime by yourself and you'll finally get it yeah uh, and the, if you still have questions you can uh invite your friends to play with you together uh, to set a lottery like uh, uh the one who draws the two uh, will win a bottle of water Probably so. So that will help you to understand that uh, later. And the cardinality, uh, uh, this is uh, this means the size. Yeah, the size of the set, the sample space. Uh, here denoted as omega one because we usually call it model one. Um, uh, but it's not always the case in, uh, in realistic examples in in projects in research we do not they don't want because that's a very stupid. Or who knows what what. What one means usually, um, but like for in if you say it's an urn model and uh, you say it's a sample space for an urn model, then omega one makes sense. Yeah, that's the denotion here, but not general in the math world. The cardinality, uh, believe uh, believe it or not, is n to the power of k. So why is that? Um, uh, here's the proof. But you can pause the video to think by yourself why that is true. Okay, okay, okay. So so hopefully you are thinking by yourself and already find out. It's very easy because uh, each coordinate here, uh, a one to a k, there's k coordinate, and in each coordinate it has uh, has uh, like a possibility of n possibilities there. So so by the by very famous principle called the multiplication principle, it can be uh. It's it means like there's n choices times n choices times n choices times n choices. So how many how many choices are there? Because it's a k tuple, so there's uh k uh, 
there's totally k times of n times n times n times n times n. So that's the so that's the n to the power k uh, combinations. Uh, which means like there's that that a large number of cases. Okay, so uh, we might be interested in some problem. A very famous problem in the probability world is 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 known as the like one of the three most complicated uh, probability problem is the Bristol problem. Another one is called called like shuffle cars shuffle problem, and the third problem. Yeah, maybe I forget. Uh, I, I cannot imagine now, but Bursley problem is a very large topic and uh, it's studied by many mathematicians until today. So there are, so in this question, suppose there are like uh there are 121 students enrolled in, in math uh, 394 course. So what is the probability that at least two of them have the same birthday? Um so first we'll consider uh what's the what's the uh, sample space sample space uh here because the um uh, because one year have three hundred and sixty five days so the end is three hundred and sixty five because there are three hundred and sixty five possibilities for each student the birthday date have that kind of uh domain to choose from and k here is obviously it's one hundred and twenty one. Uh, that is the uh, that is the uh, number of students you like you draw draw a student out and uh, to find out what's the number of date of the of his or her birthday. So in this case, uh, the sample space is is a one hundred twenty one tuple, and for each of the iterations in this two tuple, it is uh, it can choose from one to three hundred and sixty five. So finally. The sample size is uh, uh, is three hundred and sixty five to the power of one hundred twenty one. A uh, very very large uh, a large uh, uh, number to think of. So maybe that's not make any sense, but we'll find out later. And because we are finding the probability that at least two of them have the same birthday, so which means like two of them will have the will have the same number. Or the, like join two balls, the two balls will have the same number. So. Uh, suppose we use a set A to, to denote at least two students have the same birthday. So A, the complement of A is all birthday are different. So this is a very uh, common logic to work when you're dealing with like a set very complex. Like in this case, uh, what, what is like at least two students have the same birthday? It's like one minus all students, all birthday are different. So that's up, all right? So that's like use the complement to denote one minus something, one minus probability, and that's the probability that we want. So now, uh, here the uh the sample space size is three hundred and sixty five to the power of k, which is one hundred twenty one, and uh, a to the power of uh and and here the complement of a is uh is three hundred sixty five times uh. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, and still uh, multiply them out. So why that's the case? Because first, oh, imagine the first uh birthday student birthday is like May second. Uh, that's uh that's a very famous birthday for for someone maybe. So uh May second is the first students. So for the second students, because they have different birthdays, so it cannot be on the May second. It can, for example, his birthday is uh. It's July the fourth. So, so he so in so in that case, for the rest of student, for the third student, he only has three hundred and sixty three choices. He can his birthday cannot be May the second or the July the fourth. So, so that in that logic continues on. Uh, that means uh, if all students have different birthday, uh, one by one student will have one less and less choices for their birthday. So so this formula makes sense here. As as a result, the probability of A happens, A happens, which means at least two students have the same birthday, is one minus uh, the power, uh, the probability of uh, complement of A, which is one minus um, the cardinality of uh, A complement divided by cardinality of the sample space. So this is one minus this number, which is uh, from this two formula here, we already proved. And if you calculate it out, I know it, it can be very hard to calculate, 
Uh, so remember here, K is 121. Um, you can try it on uh, calculator, but if you type all the terms like 121 terms, I don't think that's really like solvable problem. But uh, but the result has to be very, very close to one. It's, it's 0 0.9999999 something. It's very close to one. So um, this question is solved. All right, so there's a, there's another a much harder version of the ballistic problem is the uh, asymptotic ballistic problem. So, so what does this uh this problem says? It says like uh let p and k equals to this is a function. This is a two variable function. Okay, so it's a two dimensional function. Maybe uh many of you are not uh have not seen that form yet. It means like usually the function f x is, has one variable x. And here, k and n are both variable. So one minus uh, n to the power k, n times n minus one uh, until n minus k plus one be the probability that at least two out of the k students have the same birthday in a year with n days. Um, so what does uh, what does this term, term mean? Uh, do you remember it's exactly from the previous cases? If you plot this, uh, this uh, the number 365 as n and 121 as k, it will become this case. So this is a general way to find out uh, the birthday problem. Uh, this is the general formula for the, I'm, I remember it's the first formula in the birthday problem range is that is to find a year with n days. It's a year can be, it's not an Earth year, probably it's a Jupiter year or, or Sun year or a ga galaxy year, so it can, it can be uh, uh, 365, it can be any number. So n is not fixed, but we know uh, hopefully it is, uh, it can, uh, yeah, it can be a natural number. It can be, uh, it can be irrational number or it can be a uh, fraction. That, um, that, that also can be explored, but usually in this case, because it's a, uh, we still treat it as traditional birthday. So birthday cannot be like, uh, cannot have a fraction. Uh, so we assume it to be natural number probably, and the k is also like it can be it can be uh uh it can be fraction can be irrational can be complex number, uh yeah maybe not complex it's still in a real range I would say. And uh, and in this case we want to find out what's the what's the limit of this function. Uh, when n goes to infinity. So this problem is 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 kind of hard. I would say uh, uh it uses a Taylor's a Taylor's theorem uh, later, which is uh which is at a very high level of real analysis. And uh, I I don't think this question is really related to the, to the probability. Uh, it's it's more like it's more like a real analysis problem it's to find out a certain a certain sequence certain function is converge to a certain point. So this is nothing related to um, to the topic we're discussing today, which is the R model. But uh, I would like to say to remember this formula and understand how it works as a as like a problem of birthday in n days with k people. Uh, that is important. So I just want to ex explain that case. But how to solve this one uh, requires much more knowledge than we have currently. Uh, okay, so let's go to a more realistic problem. Uh, uh, this is simple. I wrote that k times, what's the probability that the largest number is at most m? So what, is, uh, so what does this mean? Uh, it means uh, you, so uh, die have six numbers, right? So it's, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And the, the probability that the largest number is at most m, it means uh, it's choosing from uh, from one to n, n can be six, can be smaller than six. So the sample space uh, using the formula as above, uh, as here, uh, the sample space uh, is um, uh, here a a one denotes to like to each of the row, uh, which is uh, what times the row? Let me see. Let me find out. Um, k times so it's it's k is a k tuple with n equal to six, and uh, 
uh, oh, sorry, it, it's, it's here. And uh, the AI can be choose from one to six. And the cardinality is k to the power of uh, is six to the power of k, and also uh, we denote another uh, we denote another uh, formula uh, another set as a a n. So what is a n? A n is the largest number. It has most n. So in this case, it's still a k table. You still draw k times, but here. The set is not from one to six, it's from one to n because you cannot exceed that. For example, if you say the large number is at most uh, four, so you cannot have any cases of uh, AK, uh, a, a k is equal to uh, five or six, it only can be one, two, three, four. So why not just say like a, AI is from one, one to the n? And that solves the problem. And here, the a n is equal to uh, m to the power of k you know, with the same logic as we calculate the cardinality of sample space. So the power of a m is equal to uh, m divided by six to the power of k. So um, that is not really related to uh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is just like divided. Uh, m and k divided by uh, 6 to the power k, the Laplace experiment calculation problem. Okay, and here's another question. It's like you wrote a die k times. What's the probability that the largest number is equal to m? So here, so previous cases, we say the largest number is uh, at most m. So here is equal to m. So which means the largest number can only be 4. So in the previous cases, for example, uh, if m equal to 4, there's uh there's four more cases than this case. So it can if you set like the k equal to three, so you use you roll that three times and a large number uh at most four, you can throw one more one. So at most four, yeah, at most four. So one, two, one at most four, one, four, one at most four, one, two, four at most four. But in this case, if you say a number, uh the larger number is equal to equal to m, equal to four. So one more one, one, two, one. It's not the case here, uh, because the largest number should be four. So at least it contains contains one four. So how we can so how can we uh denote the probability here, uh using a very using a very uh subtle scale we can say okay so the largest number is equal to n is which means I just need to remove all the case that the largest number is at most n minus one. So this becomes uh, the largest number equal to n. The largest number equal to n is equal to the large. The largest number is at most m minus the number. Uh, the largest number is at most m minus one, which is the so 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 the set becomes uh, even set becomes a n with the set difference a n minus one. So, uh, and also because a n minus one is a subset of a n, uh, or even it's a, it's a proper subset. Now, why that's the case? Because as we, as we look at before, at most n minus one only contains from one to n minus one, but at most n has one more element which can contain in the, which can change the elements in the tuple. Which is the element of the larger set, our uh, our uh, event set. So this uh, this proper inclusion uh, uh, holds true. So we compare. So now we can compute the probability of B n. Uh, B n here we say is the large number is equal to n is equal to the probability of a n uh, minus a and minus n minus n minus one. So in this case, it's p a m minus p a m minus one, and we calculate the p a m before is uh is six uh under the n to the power of k, and by that formula formula we can say the a m minus one is equal to n divided by six to the uh n minus one divided by six to the power of k. So uh here is the here is the here is the last result uh, we calculated. So if you under this question, we can move to the second model, the sampling style replacement automatis model. So in here, this case, we draw k times from n with n balls. 
the number and order of the ball are not dead. Yeah, they are noted, so the order matters. However, we do not return the balls to Earth. So you draw the first first ball out. Uh, imagine it's a ball with number 10. And you don't get it back. You just leave it out. So for the second, so for the second ball, it can never be 10. It can only be like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, nine. Uh, if there's only 10 choices. And if you still draw a ball out, say it's one, and it cannot be one for the remaining uh, remaining draws. So outcome is slightly different. It's not, uh, it's, it's, yeah, the outcome is, is still the same. It's like a tuple with A1 to the AK, there's K draws. And, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, and uh, let me think. Uh, the ice ball, yeah, it's, it's still ordered. So uh, the A1 is different from A2. A2 is different from uh, any A, A, A to I. I is not equal to two here. So an arrangement of a variation of K elements of uh, one to the N. But sample space different is different here. Uh, because uh, because the replacement is not get is without replacement, so uh, there's only be one case for uh, so for each draw the number is unique. So here we say uh, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five to the a k. Um, in this table, any of the two elements cannot be the same. So a1 to ak is still belong to the set, but with another, with one additional um, uh, condition to meet. That is, if i is not equal to j for for all the like for all the uh, indicate index here, ax is not equal to aj. Okay, so by this, uh, so by this uh, definition, we can calculate the cardinality of the sample space omega two is equal to n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three times n minus four times uh, many many terms and until it's n minus k plus one. So why does uh, that hold true? You can also think about it first. Okay. Uh, you are very smart and you already think it out. So um, because uh, because for the first term we have have n n values to choose from, and for the second term it has only n minus one because of the first value cannot be choose, and uh, for the third terms it can only have like n minus two choices because the first two values cannot be choose. So continuous this form, there's k elements. There's k elements in the case. Tuple. So the last tuple has n minus k plus one choices of the value because the previous k minus one values cannot be choose from. So that's why the sample space size is equal to this formula. And there's a simpler way to write uh, this kind of thing. Uh, as you imagine, if you write this many, many times and you will be uh, Maybe you are not really satisfied with that because it's a, it's a kind of lump. So there's a um, shorter way to represent that is is R K. So R here means um. Uh, so R. Uh, so first we read this term as R following K. So R is equal to the n here, and K is to K is equal to the K here. So R following K means. Uh, r times r minus one times i r minus two and the times many terms until the last term is r minus k plus one. So that is r following k. It's not it's not times multiplied to the r minus k but r minus k plus one. So that's that's the k terms because the first term we can view it as r minus zero. So if if it's falling to a k uh if it's falling to k minus one it's is go to uh, r minus k so there's uh so there's totally k k uh k minus uh, k plus one terms but is if it's falling to r minus k plus one there's totally k terms so there's there's no doubt and r can be equal to any real numbers but usually in probability cases it it is similar to k it can only be uh, natural numbers. If R, you can say 
uh, is 4.5 and it's very hard to consider what that condition is. You start with 4.5 balls, so what's half the ball means? Um, maybe not make really, uh, not make sense. And another, uh, another denotion I think you are familiar with is the factorial. So I don't want to uh, explain what factorial is. You might have learned it from high school, uh, the kinematics theory. And uh, there are several things I want to notice for for the uh, falling term. Like if n falling to n, so n is falling to n, which means it's times uh, time to last case is uh, and the last case is n minus n plus one. So it's yeah, it's the same to factorial, right? It's it's like n times n minus one to the one. So it's equal to the n factorial. And if k is greater than one, so the last term is zero or even smaller than zero. Imagine like n is one and k is four. So so last term is one minus four plus one is negative three. And that doesn't make sense because that doesn't exist in real world. Uh, how can you draw three times with only one, uh, draw four times with only one ball without replacement? That is impossible. So in that case, we say, okay, it's equal to zero. Uh, that's, a, that's the definition. It, why is equal to zero? It also doesn't make sense. So that is only one denotion for uh for if n falling k, uh if the k is larger than. So um are there some typical questions to the model two? Yes, there are. And the first question is uh is like that. It's like choosing the correct key for for many door attack. So you have a bunch of n keys, which exactly what opens a locked door. You try out one key after another using each key only once. What is the probability that the case key opens the door? So by the first sense, maybe you think of like um, the last key, if if you try one more key, the probability increases because the first several keys are already not considered. So the probability increases. But actually, I would say, uh, if you really try this out and using the formula we studied before, I will find out probability for any of the keys is exactly the same. So first, let's see. Um, so first, define the keys. So the keys can be the balls inside the urn. It can be one, two, three, uh, to n, uh, because they're n, because they're uh, n keys, right? So, and the door is the only, uh, and the lock door is fixed. Uh, it's 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 likely to determine like which which key opens that door. So the sample space here is uh, a one a k. Uh, and each AI equal to, uh, is, is belongs to one to N, but no two AI can be the same. This is because uh, if you try one key out, if it fails, you do not really want to try it again. <laughs> that is to, uh, that is for like uh, average people. They don't want to try a already failed key because key cannot change by themselves. Uh, okay, and what's the, um, so what's the probability of the, like the first key is the correct key, the correct key. In that case, the A1 should be, uh, so let's assume like the key number one is the, is the correct key that open the door. So A1 is one. If the first, uh, let's say the first, um, the first, and you try the key for the first and you open it. So. A1 is one, but if you try the first key, a uh, second key, and it turns out to be correct one, then uh, A2 equals to one. So in that case, AN, AK is equal to N minus one, N minus two, uh, and follow to all the terms until like N minus one, minus K minus one, plus one. Uh, here is equal to m minus k plus one, and times one because, uh, because the successful key or the correct key is already fixed. So any other terms is coming from n minus one. So in this case, this is equal to m minus one falling to k minus one. Uh, so finally we solve it out as uh the probability of k a uh, a. A k, which like the k's key is the correct key for any k, 
is equal to m minus one falling to k minus one divided by m falling to k. So in this case, it's one over n. So it's irrelevant to k, which means uh, any of the keys uh, is the correct key has the same probability, it turns out. And that is logical because uh, because uh, you don't know, for example, there's like uh, you're sitting in front of the table and there's uh, a line of key on the table. Uh, it's very hard to define which in which one you try the first one. The first one has uh, has uh, n way to start with. So uh, and in the n ways, the first one has the same probability to open the door is one minus n. Uh, and uh, and in that case, all the key has one minus n probability, and that's the common way to think why why the uh, why the answer is is irrelevant to the k. Uh, okay, so that's uh, I think that's all for today, and uh, and in the next week there will be two more models, model three and model four, and also uh, some summary about the four models. Uh, the the model for next week three and four will be harder than the than one and two model. And there's more to think about, especially sampling with replacement or the gradient. Uh, just imagining uh, you uh, uh, you get a ball out and you denote that number and you put back to the R again. And that's, uh, that's a much more complex uh, situation than we explored today.